Hi, today we're going to have a look at this Andon Star AD407 microscope and this was sent to me free of charge by Andon Star for the purpose of this video. And what it is, is an all-in-one inspection microscope. So it's got the base, it's got some lights, it's got a 270 times fixed lens, it does have a focusing ring just here. There's a camera built in to it at the top here and then we've got the actual display module which controls the camera functions and at the top there's also an HDMI port and a micro SD card slot for recording the footage. Now I think this is designed for general purpose inspection work. It came with a couple of clips that can screw into the base and that would be if you want to hold a slide or something like that in place at the bottom. It came with a USB power supply, but it's a European one, so no good for me in the UK. And then it's got a remote control, but I think everything that is on the remote control is controllable from the menu buttons on the screen itself. It's got a couple of LED lights on goosenecks, which is quite nice. You can position them where you want and illuminate your work. And then basically you can adjust the height and use the focus to get it in focus. You can't really change the zoom other than the 270 times zoom that it's got on the lens itself. It does have a digital zoom on the screen, so you can increase the size of the objects on there, and because it has a four megapixel sensor, that does mean that you can actually zoom in and not necessarily lose pixels if you're looking at it on a 1080p monitor. So it comes with this little lead attachment. It's got one micro USB cable that goes up to the display, and then a little connector that goes off to the base for the two LED lights, and this has the brightness control for those two LED lights. There's nothing special about this. Um, it's got a couple of 1 watt LEDs in here with the resistors actually on the LED boards, and I think this either just PDRMs the output or just uh, adds some resistance to it. So when we plug it into the USB port, you can see the LEDs immediately power up, and it says welcome on here. We can change the brightness of the LEDs by pressing the up and down buttons and at full brightness it's drawing about 1.8 watts or so. With the display on as well it's drawing one amp exactly from the USB port, so about 5 watts. So you could potentially power this from a power bank if you wanted to inspect something while you were on the go or something like that. But it's a relatively compact unit and you can see here we're just zooming in on a bit of card that we've got here. And we can f focus that in, and it gives a really crystal clear image. Let's have a look at what the HDMI output actually looks like. So here is what a PCB looks like under the microscope. And moving things around, you can see a little bit of the effect of the rolling shutter, but there is basically no lag between doing something on the board and it appearing on the camera, appearing on the screen on the HDMI port. So that's really quite nice that there's no lag there that is perceivable anyway. But bear in mind that this is a fixed magnification. These are 0805 components. This is a SOT23 5 pin package. That's basically all that you're going to get on your screen. If I put a ruler underneath, you can see basically our field of view is about 12 millimeters from left to right. So that's all you get. You can zoom in. So if we have a, if we put this back under the microscope, we can press the up and down button on the microscope. And you can see on the bottom left there, we've got the magnification up to a maximum of three times. And basically that just fits in a 0805 component and not a lot else. The screen itself is really quite crisp and clear. It's seven inches across. I couldn't actually find out any information about what the resolution of the screen is, but it appears to be 1080p from what I can see. But you can see we get good clear images when we're moving the PCB around, so no real complaints about the display. And it is quite bright as well, even in here with all the lab lights on. I'm able to see that image really quite nicely. Now one limitation potentially is this base. It's only about 120 millimeters wide. And so when you're looking at your PCB underneath, it does have a tendency to overhang. And if you're trying to do some soldering work on here, you could find this slightly unstable. So what you'd probably end up needing to do is put another board on top of this that is wider and better supported so that you can have your hands resting on it and solder it in the normal way. Another thing to mention is the height between the base plate and the camera when you're looking at it is about 8 centimeters or 3 inches or so. So 
It's a little bit shorter than what you'd normally get on some of the other types of microscope, but it's a relatively narrow stack, so when you're uh, in there with your soldering iron, you're not really too hindered by some great big lens or something like that. One other thing that strikes you when you assemble this, because it does require a little bit of assembly, is that some of these parts are really quite lightweight. It doesn't really affect the function, and it does still feel quite nicely made, but pieces like this metal rack, I think, are a much cheaper metal, and then I think they've been plated or painted. I think you can probably see what I mean here. It does appear to be some kind of aluminium alloy of some kind. It's not magnetic, but it looks to have been cast. You can see some of the markings here. And then it looks like it's had some kind of plating over it because it's it's got that slightly too silvery finish for plain aluminium. Here is the rear of the device and it appears to have been made from ABS given the kind of sheen and the way that it's been made. It's about 1.5 millimeters thick based on the thickness that you can see through the vents here. So certainly not flimsy. It is quite nicely constructed. But at the same time, because it is just plain ABS, it doesn't quite give that impression of quality that you might expect. However, other than that, it is really quite a nicely designed unit and really quite compact. So if you haven't got the space for a bigger binocular microscope, this might be the kind of thing that would suit your lab. It's an all-in-one unit. You can just put it on the shelf out of the way when you're done with it. And it just plugs into your USB port as well. So really quite nice and portable. Now, one thing that they keep mentioning in the advert about this device is what they're describing as kind of 3D view. And I think really all that means is that this actually has quite a decent depth of field. And let's have a look at what that actually means when you've got a PCB underneath it. So I think this is what they're describing as the 3D view. If you have a look at the angle that I'm holding the PCB, it's probably about 60 degrees to the normal. And you're still able to keep the majority of the shot actually in focus, which is quite impressive and particularly useful if you want to try and inspect the side of a component, just make sure that it's fully soldered or that it's, uh, you know, got the correct polarity mark or something like that. If you compare that to a standard microscope, when you're looking at the traces, for example, even the top of the components normally starting to get a little bit blurry at that point. So really quite a deep depth of field in comparison to other microscopes. So let's talk about the pricing of this unit. Now on the AliExpress website for and on Star, they are selling it themselves for $270 delivered within Europe at least. So it's certainly not a cheap piece of equipment. And I think by the time that you've saved $270, you will be considering whether this is the right piece of equipment for you or whether you should be buying a proper binocular microscope. Now. For me, I think it really depends on what you want to use it for. It is fine for soldering underneath, but with only the one camera and you only get to look at the screen, you don't get any perception of depth. So for some assembly work, it's going to be a little bit tricky. Basically, the, the only cue that you've got that you're about to approach the PCB is that the component is starting to come into focus. Either that or you have to kind of look at the screen and then look at the height that your tweezers are at or whatever and if you're trying to place a particularly tricky part like a, a large TQFP package or even a small BGA device you're going to struggle a little bit with this on its own. In fact you'll probably end up looking at the PCB itself rather than at the screen at that point and use that as the general positioning. So you know that is one of the limitations of a mono microscope like this the nice thing about this device is it's an all-in-one compact solution. When you want to use it, you can just pull it out. And when you're done with it, you can just stick it on a shelf somewhere. With the full-size binocular microscope, you really do have to invest in quite a bit of space. And they are quite chunky. So if you have only got a quite a small work area, or if you do work that's a bit more portable, then those kind of solutions aren't going to be much good. So I think that's about all I'm going to say about this unit. I think it's really down to your purposes as to whether this is the right device for you. The nice thing about it is that it does just work out of the box. You don't have to worry about all of the camera attachments and all that kind of stuff that trips people up when you get a full-size microscope. And it does give very nice quality images. So there's no problems with the images whatsoever. It's just the limitation of having a mono camera that means that you can't sense the depth and also the fixed zoom, which might mean that this just isn't right for some people. 
I'll put a link to the AliExpress listing for this for and on Star. You can actually get it a little bit cheaper from some other retailers, so it might be worth shopping around if you are interested in this product. Hopefully you found the video useful, and until next time, thanks for watching.